Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to episode 67. 67. 67. Of 67. the Calypso Seven. Cigar Review Podcast. Nice. As always, in the lovely Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge in Richardson, Texas. And we're going to do our second Ashton, and actually our first true Ashton that we've ever done, donated to us by the great Nate Rowland, our buddy and friend and lover. No, I'm sorry, not our lover. But anyway, he's a cool dude. Love the guy to death. Nate Rowland. An American hero. He is. He's kind of like G.I. Joe. American hero. He is like G.I. Joe. Fuck yeah. <laughs> so we're doing so this the is Ashton the Ashton ESG, ESG this stick torpedo. A $25 stick. I cannot find anything about it on the internet. It's that rare. Randy, and Brandon, what are you seeing about, what are you looking at the, I'm the look, I looked up leaf? Ashton it's, it's ESG pretty and veiny. it came up virgin. Or not veiny, it's pretty lumpy and rustic. It is, considering that it's a $25 cigar. It's a little but lumpier than I expected. Uh, you look at the uh, the band, and I'm so seeing five or six plates. The band itself must have cost them some some money. Oh, the band's yeah. beautiful though. The it band is beautiful. Coin. You can if the, I feel like if I shook it around, you're going to see your future come up. It's like should we order pizza? <laughs> like magic eight ball. Yeah, it's got some serious artwork on it. I mean, Jared there's like Bioka a picture on here yes. of like trees with a reflection <laughs> in the water, and then you got like a shot of like Esteli. It's like ridiculous. Hey. Jared either keeps Jared's the rep for Ashton. He either keeps great notes or he's got a killer memory. Because I've only met him like three times. And he called me the other day and I answered the phone and I didn't give him my name. He goes, Is this Matt or Randy? And I'm like, Randy? Hey, this is Jared with Ashton. I'm like, Wow, how did you know? <laughs> it was one of the two options. Jared's I, actually the reason I wanted to become a rep. Yeah. I was working over at Chamberlain Steak and Chop House mm-hmm. and we did our first cigar dinner since the nineties. And Jared walks in in this sear sucker suit and mm-hmm. he is just Telling people what it is, what time it is, how the cigar is. We did a three course, three cigar dinner, finishing with VSG before ESG mm-hmm. came out. And honestly, uh, outside of Tom Selleck, Jared Bioka would be my first man crush of all time. <laughs> he's a pimp. I kind of have a man crush on Tom Selleck. He's, he's one of my, I've got three man crushes Costner, Tom Selleck, and I can't remember the third, so go to hell. Everybody else. I can't remember the third. Oh, Steve Carell. Steve Jared Carell, sorry. Bioka, a guy from high school named Victor Oh, and Bogle. Brandon Holdsworth. You're my fourth no. man crush, yes. No. Wow. And yeah. Brandon Luna would be my fifth. The year of uncomfortability. I love you, bro. I love you, too, bro. Cigar Lounge. <laughs> and that is Brandon Holdsworth, by the way, if you didn't know, because we didn't introduce him. No, we didn't. I'm Brandon Luna. I'm Randy Rankin. <laughs> And I am Brian Holsworth. <laughs> <laughs> Never going to let me live that down. No, but that Son was so awesome. Bitch. I've rewatched that opening. I haven't rewatched that episode that many times, but I've rewatched that opening at least 20 times. It's hilarious. It's funny as shit. Today, my kids were like, Are you going to be on their show again? And I go, Yeah. He goes, Well, you need to make sure that you write a piece of paper that lets him know what your name is. <laughs> I was like, It's his name, too. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know, right? I love your line. You're like, How hard was that to fuck up? <laughs> Okay, we're pairing. We didn't mention our last episode. We paired with the Bellhaven Scottish Ale, which yeah, is an awesome beer. Delicious. And yes, we're recording the same night. But hey, we're pulling back the curtain. That's what we do in this place. We're drinking out of the Garrison Brothers Texas Bourbon uh, Glen Cairn glasses. But we're, but we're drinking, drinking Woodford Reserve. Yeah. So that might be a sin of some Woodford sort. Woodford is Angel's Tears. Woodford is one of the best bourbons. Okay. Period. It's very tasty. Have so let's cut. Double Oak? Mm. Yes. Yeah, double yes. up badass. Dude, they're all good. Mm-hmm. They're all oh. delish. Yeah, Woodford is one of the best. So the, uh, the cold draw. Why well, haven't Oh, we're cutting with our Monte Cristo cigar cutter donated to us by Altidus USA. And, and Eddie the great Gavito. Eddie Gavito. We Question love Eddie. Question for you. When you guys are out and someone asks for a cigar, do you ever give them a torpedo? Or does it piss no, you No, I rarely give people torpedos. Give people because, torpedoes. well, because a lot of times they either have a punch or they have a blocked cutter. That's why I cutter. love my. I have the my favorite cutter is uh, it's a little Cuban Crafters and it's got the hole for the torpedo, and it's got that little back to it. So you cut every cigar perfect. It's like if it's a torpedo, if it's not a torpedo, every cigar it's gets cut dummy proof basically. It's great. Yeah. I love it though. I mean, it's awesome. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna run the show and I'm gonna ask you questions. I'm gonna interview you guys. Go for no, it. We've been places. interviewed by several people lately. Yep, Robert Patrick. If Scott you can do Wilson. better than Robert Patrick, then go for it. And Scott Wilson. So what is your history with Ashton? Have you tried uh, Cabinet, Heritage, VSG? Have you guys tried all the others? Mm-hmm. I have not. This is like the second Ashton I've ever had. Uh, the only one we've reviewed was the La Roma de Cuba, which yeah. is a great cigar. It's the great El cigar. Jefe, I think it was, that we smoked. Or no, it's the Mia Moore, uh, which is a great cigar. Uh, personally, when people come into the store and ask for a mild Connecticut tasty cigar and they're willing to spend 8 to 15 bucks, because we always ask price range. What are you looking in the price range? 
Because you know, and, and I'm not bragging, and Brandon, the reason why Brandon is a customer of the store, the reason why I became a customer of the store, is that we... Fire. We Solid. want to... Nate, same thing. We ask you what you're looking for. Not... You come in and say, hey, what's your most expensive cigar? We're not going to say, oh, we've got Opus. We're not going to do that. We're like, what do you like? And we'll, we'll walk you through the process. And and if someone says they're willing to spend 8 to 12 bucks for a mild cigar that has a lot of flavor, I mentioned three cigars. The Rocky Patel 99, the Dunhill Age. You get paid 50 cents every time. No, I don't. I wish, to, I wish we did. Yeah, I wish to, No, I wish. Dude, if I did, I'd be so rich. But anyway, so the Rocky Patel 99, the uh, Dunhill Aged, which have you had that? Is an incredible Connecticut. Nate's a huge fan. And the Ashton Cabinet. Those are uh, my, I think those are the three best mild Connecticut's you can get on the market, period. Hands down. And if eight to nine, eight to 12 bucks is your price range and you want Connecticut, those are what you go for. Now, are there more complex Connecticut's? Yes. The New Wave by E.P. Carrillo, the, Long since gone. Leave uh, Connecticut Reserve. It's that's not, a dope cigar. Not bad. Uh, you know, if you yeah, not, and that's in the six seven dollar range, and that's what I recommend. And I'll even do the Reserve Real by. Uh, There's nothing wrong with that. Reserve Real is a great staple. Connecticut. Yeah, absolutely. By who? Uh, the Romeo, Romeo and Juliet, Juliet Reserve oh, Real. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that cigar. I would recommend a, a Reserve Real over a Macanudo any day of the week, and it's two three dollars less than a Macanudo. Absolutely. So. So, Brandon, how long have you uh, been smoking cigars, man? Oh, about six see, weeks. Yeah, about yeah. Well, no, we've, um, we've done like sixty-eight episodes. Yeah, or about six, four seven. years, I guess. Right on. Four years. Who uh, turned you on to originally smoking some sticks? Oh, back in the day, man. Well, see, okay, I had a, I had a big break when I first got into cigars. It was like early '90s, and then I got married, and the cigars stopped once I had kids, just because I didn't have the money Hell for yeah. it. Yeah. And then I got back into it recently, and it was two people that got me back into it. This guy named Chip Kenlock I work with, and a buddy of mine named Stephen Fulce. And they both stepped me back into cigars with the Rocky Patels and the Alec Bradleys. And I was really, it was at the point where I, was, I wasn't I was buying cigars. They were giving me their cast-offs. I go out with them, and it's like, hey, you need a cigar? Boom, here's something. That's so they crazy. were BOTLs and just hand cigars out, mm -hmm. you know? And that was really what got me back into cigars. And then I started researching on my own, getting into it and finding out what I liked, reading all the stuff cigar on the nerd. blogs. Yeah. Cigar. Reading all the stuff on the blogs. What is this? Why do I like it? You know, what can I find that's similar to it? And just really reading up. And then I found this place because it was close to work. And yeah. I went to two places. I went to Stafford and Jones. Is that what it's called? Stafford? Yeah. Great yeah. store. Great and then store. I went here. Great and store. This place was the one that won me over because they were more interested in what do you like? What do you, what are you smoking currently? Let's recommend you a couple other things that might be similar. Mm -hmm. And that was. And I don't why. know. And I'm not bragging again. But I've been to hundreds of cigar stores. I can think of three that actually do that, where we actually say to you, what do you like? Why do you like that? Mm -hmm. What can I do? Okay, here's something that's similar to that. We don't carry that, but here's something similar to what you like. And you know what? We get return customers because of that very reason. Absolutely. Okay. And my cigar history is, you didn't ask me, but I'm, I'm just getting there. myself. I'm okay. hosting the store. We'll okay, I'm sorry. Well, I'm so, Brandon, hosting. what are you getting on the, pre on the, the uh, light? What are you getting? I'm getting some citrus. I'm getting like a citrusy leather. What are you getting over there? I'm getting a lot of leather and a lot of creaminess so i'm not getting the citrus yet like you are but i do have like it's like a tinge of um it's almost like a bitterness but i guess you could see that as a citrus probably mm -hmm. okay all right so randy yes i don't know you we just met we've never met what would you say is that keystone moment that made you one of us a cigar nerd uh wow it was probably 96 97 uh, we were at a, a karaoke place and uh I'd, I'd been in my 20s for a while, but I hadn't realized the beauty of being old enough to drink and smoke. Mm -hmm. Oh, drink. I started drinking, but so good. I was drinking Jim Beam and Coke, so I don't know if that counts as me being a drinker at that point. But uh, I'll start somewhere, brother. Yeah, I know. And uh, I was at a bar, and this guy pulled out a cigar, and I was like, dude, I want to smoke a cigar. I've never smoked a cigar. My wife's like, you're 26. Why haven't you smoked a cigar if you wanted to smoke one? I'm like, it never occurred to me. And so the guy's like, you've never had a cigar? And I said, no. And he pulled out a Macanudo Prince Philip, which is the Churchill. It's the starting point most of us have yeah. as a Macanudo. And uh, he cut it and lit it for me. And I just was so mesmerized by the process. I was like, wow, this is an art. I mean, it's not like a cigarette. You just 
flick and pull out of a pack and light it. It's like a done. Japanese tea ceremony. Yeah. yeah and he is. had to cut this and he had to light it for a while. And I'm like, what What are you doing there? So I'm making sure it's burning evenly because what will happen is it'll canoe on you and all that stuff. I'm like, canoe? What's that mean? He goes, you, you'll know that term later and everything. I'm like, hey, you're the you're the pro. Let me know. I'm cool. And I smoked the whole fucking thing and I got so green. I got so fucking green because it was a church hill and, and you were never inhaling it you were inhaling yeah. it no yeah. i wasn't an inhaler but i was just smoking it fast okay and i probably went through this prince philip which i think is like a seven by 48 it's the typical church hill size and having never smoked one and on top of jim beam and coke america with this america with this prince philip i was like green hmm. so my wife's like we got home because her uncle's her two favorite uncles smoked cigars, so she loved the smell of it on me. She was like, we had a lot of sex that night. It was great. But she was like, what did you think of that cigar? And I'm like, I kind of liked it, but I don't think I want anything that big ever again. That's too big for me. That's, that's what, what she, she said. said. I know. And that's when you were like, I want to marry you. <laughs> exactly. Don't leave him in there. Don't ever. Well, I started it. He left me for a second. Yeah. Anyway. But uh, anyway, so I was kind of like, I kind of like this cigar thing. It's kind of cool. And I went probably a couple of weeks, and Jeff Smith... From Sublime and uh, James dude. Norman, very cool dude. Jeff owned a cigar store. I didn't know Jeff from Adam, and uh, I went in and it's kind of like it was a lunch break, and I was like, I think I would like a cigar at lunch break. That would be kind of cool. Can you do that, or is a cigar something you're supposed to just smoke? I mean, I was so a noob. I had no clue. And so I went in and I talked to Jeff. So and what were you doing at this time? What were you? I was in sales uh, for a uh, internet travel company pre expedia and pre dot com blowout it was kind of when the dot com started you know and people uh, were making a shit yeah when I, we were making actually money in the dot com industry yeah. and so i uh i went in and i talked to jeff and i saw this i saw <laughs> shut up nate so i saw that it was a frank sinatra cigar mm. and i remember this and jeff remembers this conversation even though we did not know each other I said, so there's a Frank Sinatra cigar? I was a, I'm a Sinatra guy. You know my music taste. You know my music taste. I'm all over the all map. All over the board, brother. Yeah. And uh, so I said, I want to smoke a Sinatra cigar. And he's like, eh, it's a Dominican. It's really mild. Are you sure you want to smoke it? And I said, well, I've just started. So, yeah, that's probably what I want to do. And he goes, okay. He goes, you know Sinatra's not a cigar smoker. He's a cigarette smoker. I said, well, yeah, but I don't He was a I true pimp is what I said, was. I don't care. Sinatra was dope. Ultimate He was dope. Yeah. Sinatra was awesome. If anybody, if everybody could live Sinatra's life, you've lived a good life. But anyway, so I died really young. Yeah, <laughs> not many what? of us were could take the amount of abuse that man put on. <laughs> exactly. So. No kidding. So anyway, so I I bought one and I loved it. And this is right around Christmas time, and so that was only the second cigar. And then uh, Christmas, my wife bought me a humidor, and had all her friends buy me cigars. That's nice. It That's was so cool. awesome. Probably had like very 30, cool. 40 cigars, and and it, that. That just got me into it. It solidified it. it, for it I was yeah. like, okay, I'm the cigar dude of this group of friends that we have, and I'm going to smoke cigars anytime we're around anybody. Yeah. And, they and can't I love say it. anything because they bought them for yeah, you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that that was my history. That's where I got started, and I've been smoking. And I used to be a only smoke Friday and Saturday nights because I just wanted them to be a relaxing ritual. I didn't want to smoke on Sunday because I knew I had to go to work on Monday. But boy, that has gone to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> The follies of youth. Yeah. yeah. I started with the Macanudo Portofino. That was what you'd, you know, the guys would go out together and go out to a bar mm-hmm. and they'd have a small humidor and you'd grab the Macanudo Portofino and you'd smoke that. And that was really, I was a, you know, buy them as I smoke them kind of guy. Yeah. I never had a humidor until yeah. recently. Yeah. It's kind of funny so. now that when, you know, I don't want to say we're like the Jedi, mm. but when someone comes in. But and we are. Like, hey, do you got any Macanudo? You just feel like you want to put your arm around him and go. There's more out there, buddy. Right. Don't follow, marry. Follow me, young Padawan. Yeah, <laughs> don't about. marry the first girl okay, you sleep with. When I walked into this store for the first time, under Matt's ownership, I was looking for the Portofino. That was mm-hmm. the cigar, and we've mm-hmm. told the story, but you haven't heard it. Looking for the Portofino, and Matt didn't carry it. And so I'm thinking, well, this place sucks. <laughs> you don't have Macanudo Portofino? What the fuck kind of place is this? You so got knew, uh, slot machines in the back? I, I knew nothing. Online yeah. porn? What are you I, I knew nothing about boutiques at all. And Matt's mm-hmm. like, eh. not that he pointed me to a boutique, but he's like, you had the Porto Real. It's the Romeo and Juliet version of the Portofino, and it's cheaper. And it kind of pissed me off, and I bought it. And I remember coming back and telling my wife, I'm like, eh, I don't like that dude. That dude pisses me off. He was too pushy. And then I got home, and I smoked it, and I was like, 
wow, he knew what he was talking about. And I'm like, <laughs> I actually took the time to actually find out what I liked. So I'm like, I think I'll go back. And I lived in Allen, which is 30 miles from here. And I came back to the store because of Matt. You know, when you first meet Matt and he comes at you mm -hmm. and he hits you with some questions. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people, this is my interpretation. I, and I agree with they're, that. They're not used to someone who actually cares mm -hmm. yeah. that they're putting you with the right cigar. It comes across as he's... Are you talking down to me? Are you? I don't. I don't know you, but it sounds like you're asking me. You know, like, mm -hmm. do you like cake? Okay, mm -hmm. what do you like about carrot cake? Do you like the shit that gets in your teeth? Mm -hmm. And you know, when I when I first came in and I heard him talking, I thought, I don't know how to take this guy because mm -hmm. he comes at you and he's asking you questions. Because yeah. you know, when you come in and say, "I'm looking for a cigar," and you're a first, you're a noob, he asks you some questions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. Once you realize this guy actually gives a shit about what you're smoking, it, it really does change, you know, because I'm sure a lot of guys come in and they're like, man, I want a cigar. I didn't come in here to talk to people. I want a cigar. Mm -hmm. But, you know, once someone puts something in your hands that you're like, dude, this is the shit. Mm -hmm. That's what really puts yeah. a lot of it in perspective. Okay, so now that we've got the pre-light going on, what are you guys thinking? Uh, I think it is not heavy. I would no, say it's, it's a medium very, at best. Yeah. But... But it has a lot of flavor. I mean, this is not a boring cigar. No, there's at some all. complexity going yeah. on. It's a uh, retrohale. Cream. Is nice on it. Yeah, it's retrohale got a smooth real. retrohale. I mean, which, you could literally you know, retrohale ninety percent of what's it's coming like out of this thing. It's like roasting a marshmallow through your nose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but yet, a uh, ton of flavor. I've got a really good burn. I don't know if you can see that. But I've got a really good burn, and I hate torpedoes. I hate torpedoes. But I like torpedoes. it's got a wide open draw. And what? That's all we carry. Sorry. I yeah. don't mind torpedoes. No, Actually, there's a lot of torpedoes that I they like. They look really great when your friends come over, but for a pro, you're a Toro, Churchill, or Robusto guy. Or Corona and Lancer. Yeah, yeah. But you don't want that fancy. <laughs> the fancy tip, that's mm -hmm. for saying, hey, brothers, look what I'm smoking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I spent two extra but dollars. For, this this but looks kind of like a nipple. But for a torpedo, this open draw, and this draw is wide yeah. open, and it's got waftage. <laughs> that's the thing is you got to know – how to roll a cigar to roll a nice torpedo. That takes some talent to risk. Torpedoes and lance arrows probably the two most Here's difficult. Deal, I've heard back in the nineties when, uh, when when the boom hit. Mm -hmm. Everybody talks about the boom like it's the glory days of the twenties. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Back in the day the We're torpedo in a bigger boom now than we are then. Totally. People don't know it. But back in the nineties when the torpedo hit, mm -hmm. it was there weren't a whole lot of folks that could roll a torpedo. Mm -hmm. And let's be honest, we take DeVry, we take any of these schools of computer science, and they're all focused on these big things. Now the torpedo is not as hard to roll as it was back then mm -hmm. when you had so few people. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if there was a size that you preferred, what would be exactly, I'm going to start with you, Luna, what would be the size, what is your preferred shape and style? What is your ring gauge? Do you prefer a Perfecto? Do you prefer, uh, you know, what, if there was a Luna cigar, if you were going to put your name on something, regardless of where it's from, what it's made of, what would be the Luna standard? That is a what great would you go question. For? I would be rolling the Corona. I love Coronas. They're my favorite smokes. Just, I mean, you get a lot of flavor because it's mostly wrapper. There's less binder, there's less filler. And it gives you the definition of that cigar. I think if you roll a good Corona, you can turn it into a good Robusto and a good Toro and everything else. Now, have you ever tried... Uh, no, here's the thing. A lot of people blend to a certain size. Like, uh, yeah. you and I go in... And we're going to have, you know, Ron Mexico. And I've used this a hundred times because I love the name Ron Mexico. <laughs> it if is a great name. If you and I were to go in and create Ooh, we the Ron long. Mexico, yeah, we we're going to blend to one specific size. But what a lot of people don't realize is that when Ron Mexico goes in to blend his cigar, he wants to blend it to that shape and size. Right. They're not thinking about the Corona. They're thinking Ron Mexico loves a Toro because that's America's number one size. Yeah. Mm. Now, Randy, let me ask you. Are you a Corona guy? What now? Do, when you say Corona, are you talking the ring gauge or are you talking the length? Because if you put a Lancero a, in front of me, yeah, I'm, I'm a Lancero. I'm a Lancero no, I guy. I love Lancero. Yeah, yeah, I'm a Lancero guy, probably more so than Corona. But a lot of times you don't have enough time to smoke a Lancero. Mm -hmm. I mean, fortunately I do because I'm here all the time. But like, if I were at home and I only had 45 minutes to an hour to get away to smoke something, Corona. I think you get the most flavor out of Corona and Lancero. And if I were to design my cigar, it would be a box press Corona, a six by forty four box press Corona, and I would be that would just be my heaven of a cigar. Now my problem with Lancero is, in Texas, Lancero it may be less than a handful of stores 
Now, yeah. you know, when it comes to cigar nerds and cigar whores, Lanceros the shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to sales, Lanceros Don't and Coronas shit. Are, are shit. Are shit. Yeah, well, Coronas are. sell big here. Lanceros don't sell worth a shit. And uh, I've put the Oliva V Lancero in so many people's hands. And, and to not it. like it's that a... cigar is ridiculous, in yeah. my opinion. It's a crime. It, but uh, I'll put it, you know, we tell every rep, and I know we've told you, you know, when they bring us a new line, we say, we'll sell the first cigar. But the cigar has to sell itself after that. And I've sold so many Oliva V Lanceros, and so few people have come back to it. And I, and I just want to I want to know why. Yeah. Because that cigar is amazing. You know, it's you a great have, cigar. the way that it works is when they walk in, they look at you. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, you're the guy behind the register. Mm-hmm. What are you smoking? Mm-hmm. They look at you right now and go, what are you smoking? And you'd say, I'm smoking an Ashton Estate, Sun, Estate Sungrown mm-hmm. Torpedo. And they'd go, where's that at? You know, with a lot of these stores, you know, what a lot of people don't realize in this industry is how many people want to smoke what you're smoking because you're in mm-hmm. the know. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're Randy. Dude, Randy's there every time I go in and Randy, Randy smokes a shit ton of cigars. I want to smoke what he's smoking. Mm-hmm. So when they walk in, how many Lanceros are you actually smoking? About two a week. Okay, so two out of seven days of how many hour shifts? Yeah, you know, six to eight. You know. yeah. So out of 20 cigars a week, probably I've smoked two Lanceros. But I probably yeah. smoked five Coronas. And that explains <laughs> why the Antonio uh, Pellegroso sells like crap. Yeah, it, sells, it does. That sells like crazy yeah. here because it you does. guys are always smoking that cigar. Yeah, it's a great cigar. Although I haven't had one in a couple weeks. We need to take a break. Yeah, we're going to take back. a break. We'll come back for the more discussion with Brandon Holtzworth. The legend Cornelius. <laughs> All right, we're back for the second third of the Ashton ESG Only our torpedo. second Ashton review and our first true Ashton. Yep. Thank you, Nate, for the Ashton. Uh, would I pay 25 bucks for this? Probably not, because I wouldn't pay 25 bucks for shoes. I'm a cheap skate. But, uh, he shops at the Payless. I, actually, Let I me do. ask you a question, Randy. <laughs> but seriously. Taking $25 into account. Mm-hmm. All right, that's, that's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, let's say that if you were to go to a liquor store, not saying we go to liquor stores more than maybe once to four times a week. Yeah, closer to four, but that's okay. If you could buy, <laughs> taking into account that it's $25, mm-hmm. like myself personally, beautiful cigar, beautiful mm-hmm. experience. I'm hanging out with you guys. And, you know, with cigars, it's mainly... That's what it's about is the hangout. It's, it's the, the experience. Yeah. And I would pay $25 a hundred times to have this experience with yeah. you guys. So this, this ESG... For me with the bros. So say like your father in law is coming into town. Mm-hmm. You want to put something in his hand that blows his mind, you're gonna go with the ESG. Mm-hmm. You're gonna go with the the anniversary of Padron. Or the opus or whatever. Yeah. But take that twenty five dollars on your own for your own experience. You're in your garage, mm-hmm. partially cracked, you got the bug zapper going yep. on. What is your cigar for chilling at the house that doesn't have the magnificent band and flavor that this cigar has what are you going to smoke yourself well at? everyone knows on the show and the cigar i'm going to pick does have a magnificent band Ron i'm in mexico Me- yes <laughs> no it's a, sar- a cigar called macanudo no i'm joking uh i like to throw macanudo under the bus but everyone knows that i actually respect macanudo it's a yeah, great cigar i'd love to have that in my line but uh no i'm a alec bradley tempest Okay, so your opinion is no. Brandon, let's go to you. You don't like the Alec Bradley Tempest? <laughs> no, I do. I love Alec Bradley. Glenn Case is a great guy. The Tempest, to me, is everything I want in a cigar. It's full-bodied. It's full-flavored. It doesn't kick you in the balls, unless you are a noob. It will kick you in the balls. Do they have the black market? Alec Bradley? Yeah. yeah that's Because I love black market. Yeah, I like that's, black that's market. That's my jam. When I'm the playing. Tempest is yeah. my favorite cigar and probably will always be my favorite cigar. Because while I've loved... Everything House of Milo does, and I'm not just saying that because we've talked off Act mic. Like I'm, not much. I'm nobody. Uh, no, we've talked off mic that everything House of Milo does is amazing, and everything Alec Bradley does isn't amazing. But when Alec Bradley gets it right, they get it right. And I think, you know, the fact that Prince Sato won Cigar of the Year and Tempest is never even ranked is mind boggling to me because I think the Tempest is so much better than the Prince Sato. I love a lot of Alec Bradley stuff. They have some great marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, my side of it's a little bit different than, you know, a lot of other people's Mm -hmm. sides because, you know, uh, as a cigar rep, you 
you take your own cigars and you you take that band and that flawless wrapper and the box presentation mm -hmm. i mean brandon what are the cigars that you looked at and right offhand you thought this presentation this flawless wrapper what are the cigars that just and don't don't take any of my cigars into account i want to know what your your pure you know your 17 year old vietnamese girl looking for husband in america tell yeah. me what you're looking at i i'm just showing my ass because i'm about to ask it but i've got a license i had a, a big hard on for ligas for a while i mean i was really into not even the band was very simple it almost looked homemade. Totally clean, though. Yeah, totally, totally clean, clean, beautiful band. I was in love with the number nine, the T52. I even liked the Undercrowns for a phase. The Undercrown Viva, Corona Viva, one of my favorite Coronas. Great cigar. Yeah, great factory, is. great yeah. family. And since then, I've kind of moved over to the Tetuaje side. I like a lot of what Tetuaje does. I really, really love the Noella Reserva. And I understand they're not making them anymore, so that's that's horrible. I hate it when I just. But I really loved the Tetsuahe Noella line, uh, the Regio line, also very very good. See, now I was a huge Padron whore, and when the Tet Red labels came out, mm -hmm. I thought at the time, remember their price points were a lot lower. Yeah. And when the Tet Red label came out, I thought this is something that totally does truly compare with that. Mm -hmm. You're still not drinking because you're push. I've but, been drinking. No, I'm talking to Luna. Okay. Brian Luna. So, Brian I mean, Luna. <laughs> We're switching to Maker's Mark now. Now, Randy, on the retailer side, I mean, you see a lot of guys that come in and they're like, I want a Liga. I want a Liga. Yeah, I we've, mean, we've got our... we push people to? Uh, okay. We've got certain people. We've got a guy that I don't know why he does this, and we've talked, tried to talk him out of it. Comes in about four or five times a week and buys five Liga number nine Robustos. At a time, and we're like, you know, you realize if you bought a box, you'd get a ten percent discount. You know what? You know, Bellicoso's, once again, Bellicoso is the way to go for me on that. I but, love Bellicoso. Well, Bellicoso is great. Apparently, he's a salesman and he doesn't have that much time, so Robusta works for him. Uh, but it's like, uh, you know, because once again, complimenting us here that we're not in it for the buck. I mean, you know, it's like everyone we have a business, we're in it for the buck, but the buck isn't the bottom dollar. <laughs> but uh, Coming. So we're telling the guy, it's like, you know, if you bought a box, which you're going to smoke in a week, you get a 10% discount. But his thing is, is if he bought a box, he'd smoke them in two days. Mm -hmm. So he buys five a day, four you, or five nights a week. You actually have but, to look at the logic behind it. Yeah. If you have it, you have it. Yeah. You know, I, I, I run into a lot of these retail stores that say, we don't do events because these guys will come in, they'll buy a box of cigars, mm -hmm. and they'll get a half a box or an ashtray or whatever it is for free, and then we don't see them for a certain yeah. period of time. Yeah. Well, a lot of these retail that, stores that I see don't realize is the more cigars that they have, mm -hmm. the more they're like to be like, hey, Luna, let's go for a power walk around the neighborhood and smoke a cigar, or hey, um, brother-in-law, let's have a cigar and talk trash about our father-in-law. Mm -hmm. let's, let's do this, let's do this. And, you know, they're not... With this guy, he's actually seeing that if I have more cigars, I'm going to smoke some more yeah. cigars. And that yeah. happens. And uh, but as far as Liga goes, uh, Nate's a, Nate buys a lot of Liga. He started uh, off. He was a big Liga guy for a while. And uh, he, we've changed him, but he still loves the Liga. They're and not that, we've, stick, not that we've changed him in a negative way, like "Ooh, Liga sucks." But one, they've got that Liga rarity. It's hard to get. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's be honest. There's not that many people that can roll them. I'm I've sure. been to the factory. Yeah, they yeah. have one little room yeah. off to the right yeah. side. Yeah, and they, like they had that flood a couple years ago that ruined it. Yeah, I understand that. But, and they age them, too. So that but helps. so when someone comes in and says, hey, I want a Liga Pravada, when we don't have them, which is rare because we are a Liga store and we do have it most of the time. But there are times when we don't have it, so then we'll do the whole, okay, what do you like about Liga? And so if someone comes in asking for a Liga Pravada number nine, and we don't have it. I'll usually try to point them to uh, what we have in store, uh, a Rocky Fifteenth, because they're similar in strength, they're similar in fa flavor. Ezra Zion Tantrum. Uh, man. The Ezra Zion Tantrum. No, that's a man cigar right there. That's the, a Zion, man well, cigar. Yeah. The, so the Tantrum is even more balls to the wall than a league. It could is. Ever be. It is. But I mean, uh, that's the step up. Yeah. yeah. It is. If you want to step up from the nine? Try a Tantrum. So seriously, not just saying this. Well, I know what you're it's saying. It's a progression. You're looking thing. at it a car yeah. way. So you're like. Okay, you could drive the Toyota Tercel, mm -hmm. okay, or you could drive the Bentley 
I have a huge cock deal. Yeah. yeah. But, well, I mean, because uh, you, you, I mean, as a cigar smoker, you 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 kind of get to that point where it's like, okay, I'm smoking medium bodied stuff. Well, now I'm smoking. Someone handed me a full bodied. This is badass. I might take a couple to get me into the full bodied stuff. But then that's all you want, yeah. really, you know. But uh, not to kiss up because we sell a shitload of them. But uh, the Jamais Vu, I think, is equal in strength and flavor. That's a nuanced cigar, man. To you know uh, what, to the Liga number nine, and to be honest, I would rather have a Jamais Vu than a you number know. Nine. I work for the company, so you know, I'm, my my opinion is entered. And when you get into cigars, you have guys that smoke cigars not because this band is absolutely gorgeous, because this band looks like something that would have been on the outer limits. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It'd be like, you know, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's an amazing. But when you get into a lot of cigars. People want a lot of those names. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, you said you came out with Drew Estates, and then, you know, your tastes change. Mm. Not saying that they were bad cigars, but we've all revisited those cigars that we started with. Oh, yeah. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. What would be that cigar, those cigars that when you think about your early day smoking, I'm not talking, I'm talking before your first, you know, your first marriage. Mm. What were those cigars that you started off smoking on? It was, the, it was the Macanudos, man. It was all Macanudo Portofinos and probably a couple of Fuentes here and there, but... The ones that, I mean, really that was casual smoking. Mm -hmm. When I really got into it, the ones that I don't revisit enough now, but I still like them, Rocky 92... Um, Rocky 92, I always called that the poor man's padrone. It's a great smoke. I've always called it a good friend. It is a good friend. Yeah. The the, padrone, I mean, the padrone 1000 line. I mean, the the 2000, the 5000. I was smoking those by the bundle, man. I put a a housing addition on that compound. When Mm. we, uh, last March, when... uh, the Ezra Zion boys took me down to Nicaragua. We drove past the Patron compound, and all I could think was, there needs to be a hallway here that has my name on it. <laughs> right. 3,000, 6,000, I, I spent, that was three years of my life. Yeah, yeah. I understand. And that Patron's another one that I really gravitate towards. When I when I know I want something and it's an old friend that I know it's going to be a good cigar, I'll go for a Patron. Mm-hmm. 64 is freaking awesome. 64 Maduro is beautiful. I, pr- I prefer the 64 with the 26. Yeah, I, 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 do too, I do too. I do too. And price not being an issue, I would still smoke the 64. What's weird is on the 26 is I prefer the natural over the Maduro, but in yeah. the 64 I prefer the Maduro. Yeah. So I don't know. Although the, the Esteban Carreras <laughs> 10 Años, which is the 26 Maduro, I love that, but I don't. I think it's better than the 26 Maduro. I don't understand it. If you take into account like El Rey del Mundo, Robusto, Suprema, the mm-hmm. Oscura. Oh, uh, with the, pa- the paper wrapper? Paper. That's a fucking great cigar, Dude. man. Nobody knows about it. And you know, it's been around a million years. Yep. And it is I'm part of a B&M and I've never heard of it. Dude, it's awesome. Oh, yeah. It's Tobacco a great Jesus cigar. It's good. Is it? All right, so Brandon, let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. We are going on a road trip. Mm-hmm. All right, we're going on a... Uh, road trip! We're about to have 12 hours in front of us. And I look at you and say, I'm taking care of the gas. You're taking care of the smokes. What are we smoking on Ooh, a road good trip? Good question. Ooh. Good question. I, I wish I'd have asked you that question. Yeah, that's a good one, one, man. All right, so the first hour, because you got to remember, we're going to stop and we're going to get chips. Then we're going to move into beef, get beef jerky, jerky. Yeah, And absolutely. then we're going to move into <laughs> Red Bull and more beef jerky. Five-hour energy. And okay, so we're going to start gyms. off. We're going to start, off, gyms. We're gonna start off light. Mm-hmm. I'm going to bring a couple of Cubans because we're going to start us off Which light. Which Cubans? I'm going to bring some. I'm going to bring bring some some. I'm going to bring some punch. Romeo Short Short Show. No. no, I'm going to bring some. Yeah, uh, okay. San Cristobal de Habana. Uh, San Cristobal de la Habana El Principes, mm-hmm. which is a great floral light smoke. It's very good. Very pretty. Or um, what's the other one? The punch. What's the small punch? Small punch cigar. Yeah, small punch. Oh, no, yeah. Part of, no, part of short. Four. Oh, part of okay. short. Okay. Bring some part of shorts. Start us off light. And then we'll step into like maybe an E.P. Carrillo New Wave Connecticut, which is a little light, but it's got a little bit of balls Man, to he's it. Thinking about this, yeah, he is. Put some more. And then once we get into more the beef jerky side of things, <laughs> I'm going to bring Headley Grange for the beef jerky side of things because that's got some complexity to it and it's got some meatiness to it. Okay. And then we're going to step into some drones, into like the. 3,064 range, maybe. 3,000 is is a perfect cigar. That's yeah. the Toro, right? Uh, maybe a shorter than the Toro. Yeah. So it's, it's like 4,000 the Toro? Because the number is based on the size. the size, yeah. All right, Randy. Yeah. You and me, we meet up in Phoenix. We're going okay. to the California border. We got, yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. no, we're going to Pasadena. So we got about four or five hours. Okay. What are we starting off with? We started we start, off with Mexican food for lunch. We started with okay, Filibertos. So this is afternoon. Yeah. Okay. 
because we're starting off in the morning and have a different smoke. We're starting off in the afternoon. Okay, we just finished Mexican food in Phoenix, mm -hmm. and we're driving to Pasadena. Okay, no I'm saying gonna... to leave a V because that's just too easy. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I'm more creative than that. Oh, we're going with the Macanudo Maduro. No, I'm joking. Anyway. <laughs> so... And Randy's out of the car. <laughs> no, we're starting with the Oya de Nicaragua. 1970 Dark Corojo. Which one? I like El Martillo. That, that, I like the Pelagrosa size. The they're, they're all good. They're, they're, they're good. They're fucking That's what we're starting with because we've just had a hearty meal and it's cheap. Because it's under six bucks. That Pelagrosa is under six bucks and it's tasty as fuck. So we do that. And then when we're finished with that and we've still got a couple of hours left, we're smoking a. It's, remember, you got to keep going forward. You yeah, can't go back. You can't just say we're starting at balls deep and then yeah, we're take a step back and go to something creamy and delicious. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm fully aware of that. That's where I'm going. I'm not thinking. Okay. Because we're good friends and we don't smoke the cigar enough, I would pull out a Rocky 92 Churchill. And that would get us almost to Pasadena. Yeah. And then we'd finish off with an Ezra Zaya tantrum. tantrum. Yes. I didn't even ask for that. But yeah. I'm serious. I'm I, I said the same when you said it was like a short smoke. You only got a certain amount of time. Tantrum. Yeah. You know, I, and that would be three incredible smokes to smoke back to back. And I will do that. Yeah. In the next month, I will do that progression. I will do the Oida Nicaragua Pelagrosa, Rocky 92 Churchill, Ezra Zaya Tantrum. And I will smoke those yeah. three back to back. Because I know that would be an orgasmic experience. You know what? I would almost probably, at this point, I would probably replace um, the EP Carrillo with the EF2? No, AF2. 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 The AF2. I like but the I AF1 like the AF1 better than the But AF2. it's stronger than the AF2. Have so. you guys tried the uh, Suave? Mm -hmm. I haven't tried the Suave. Mm -hmm. Oh, you for know what we want to try? And you got to find it for us. It's the There's a Nomad Connecticut that's supposed to be like a balls to the walls Connecticut. Is it his limited yeah, edition? His limited. I've got one at the house. I'll bring oh, it up for you. Try that. Dude, Fred's a cool dude, man. We, I, I mean, well, I, ask him if we can get, because he's a fan of the show, see if we can get some. Uh, I like the Connecticut's, but I like them when they have a little something extra. That's why I like the New Wave Connecticut, because to me, that's And we still haven't done it. our. Farewell. We still haven't done the series. That, yeah, that should be 69. That should be 69. That should be 69. Oye to Nicaragua. Did a 1970 Antonio called the Siri C. It was the Antonio cigar with a Connecticut wrapper, and it was the greatest Connecticut that I've ever had in my entire life because it was kick you in the nuts while I'm drinking cream. It was yeah. the greatest creamy cigar of all time, and we've got three left, and one for Matt, one for me, and one for Brandon. And we we've, mm. we've reached out to listeners. We've gone on the internet. It's gone. First thing when uh, Drew Estate took over or even Nicaragua, the first thing they did was eliminate the Series C. And Matt was livid because he loved it. I loved it. We had a lot of customers that loved it. And Jonathan, Drew, and uh, Marvin came into the store and were like, what the fuck? Why did you get rid of that cigar? And he's like, because people would buy it thinking it's Connecticut and it would kick him in the ass and they wouldn't buy it again. And they're like, yeah, but we told people. And he's he like, yeah, remember. but he, that's what yeah. he said. He goes, nobody does that though. But people do that they, now. They were ahead. Of, they were ahead of their time. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. it's like EP. You know, the EP Rio New Wave was a Connecticut that had some balls to it, yeah. and then now everything since then, Nomad's been putting them out. There's a bunch of people putting those out where it's Connecticut. Look at the Camacho with, Connecticut. Yeah. yeah, dude, that's a kick in the balls, dude. Yeah. Did you ever have that JDN Series no. C? Good. It's, it's got the the 1970 band, but it's a Connecticut. Yeah, and I'm get... so worried that after I know, all the talk, lose. and it's been aged at least five years, it's, it's gonna not going to be as tasty as it was when we first had it. How it works out is it's like this with Coca-Cola and Pepsi. Mm -hmm. Discontinued cigar, you get enough people that are like, dude, I'm hammering for this cigar. Mm -hmm. They bring that cigar back out, and the best thing that could happen is that there's an honest representation. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. so many times you're like, dude, like punch rare Corojo. That cigar first came out, and you were like, "Which isn't Corojo? It, which isn't Corojo? Yeah. Nor is it rare. Not anymore. <laughs> it's Sumatra, and Sumatra is not rare. It's still, it's Why good, they call it like, rare Corojo? I've I like never that understood cigar, that. I think it, no, it's cigar. fine. It's a good cigar. With a little bit of age, I put mm -hmm. it up against a lot of other sticks, man. Yeah. It's still a great stick. And this is the thing: it's so hard to pick because there's so many cigars that I like. Like I go into my humidor, and I know there's I've got some favorites. I know that I can always grab this, and I'm going to love it. Mm -hmm. And it, it it's all over the place, man. Yeah. I mean, it depends on the day of the week and the mood that I'm in. It really does, you know. I will say something about this ESG real quick. 
If money weren't an issue, I would smoke this thing every day. This Dude, is this a is, tasty. This is fucking smooth and this delicious. Is the best, this is best Ashton by far. If I've we have ribeyes for dinner, oh, we yeah. still compete. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, we're at Chamberlain's. You get yeah. the corn. You got those uh, crazy Oriental or Asian. Bob's steak and chop with the yeah. big carrot and the mashed potatoes. Big carrot. Yeah. yeah. You need something that's going to still have some mad flavor, and this really does have all the mad flavor. Yeah, it's good. Great construction. I mean, I cut off. I always, when it comes to torpedoes myself, I cut off just enough to justify all the things that I say about people that cut off way too much. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like, yeah. you're a bitch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I cut off enough to get a good draw. That's get all. a great I draw. Line, enough. Yeah. But draw's never been an issue. My burn has been almost razor. Mm -hmm. I had a great yeah. ash at one point. It definitely, I mean, it, I could definitely see it being worth the money because it's just a well constructed, tasty cigar. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's yeah good like I said, if I'm, money's not an issue and somebody said, hey, let's go grab some ESGs, yeah. sit out in the backyard and smoke them, I'd be like, fuck yeah. Let's Who's buying it. the bourbon? Right. Or the scotch? I need somebody to do that. I'll be buying these ESGs. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. But no, this is by far. The best Ashton I've ever had. This is incredible. It beats the ESG or the VSG. You know, it I beats had, the cabinet. I had the VSG. Now that was my. I did a three year stint where all I smoked was Padron. Mm -hmm. And then one day I got a VSG Spellbound, mm -hmm. the Double Corona. And yeah, that's I a good. That. That's, that's the best VSG. Oh my gosh. I took a nap afterwards and I woke up and you, you wake up and you're like. And I still had a nasal passage full of that, that you know, it <laughs> resonated. Like, I need another one of these. Um, yeah. I just thought, I don't know how Jesus himself could replicate the smell <laughs> yeah. that's in my nose. Okay, that's so what's Something crazy, you get when you go to heaven, maybe. What's crazy is that while it is creamy, mm -hmm. it does have a buttload of spice. Yeah, it does. And it's got some flavor to it, for sure. Yeah, by far the best tasting Ashton I've it's ever like had. It's like reading roots through your nose. <laughs> reading roots <laughs> through your nose. It had to be a probably a Churchill for it to be roots, maybe, but yeah. Nate Roots was a a, a thing by Arthur Haley in the seventies about Alex slavery. Alex uh, Haley. Alex Haley. Did I say Arthur? <laughs> Alex Arthur. Haley. I'm sorry. The guy from Reading Rainbow was in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, Freddie Boom Boom Washington was in it. Also, he was, anyway. yeah. All right, uh, we're gonna take a break. We'll come back for the last third. All right, so we're back for the last segment of the Ashton ESG, and if you noticed. We changed clothes. We changed clothing. And Brandon Holtzworth's not here. We got rid of him. Yeah, we he's here him for the last segment. But we had a couple of things we didn't cover, and we wanted to make sure we covered those things. First off, our sponsored segment, the AJ Fernandez Sports Fiverr. Fiverr, not Fiverr. Should I talk a 1920s reporter voice? Yes, you should. No, 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 no. Okay. Not going to. Uh, we'll try to make this national, but the Cowboys got decimated yesterday by a terrible injury to their best defensive player. And ironically enough, it was their first round draft choice in his very first practice that hurt uh, Sean Lee, who's the middle linebacker for the Cowboys. And about the only decent defensive player they have on their roster, out for the season. And first practice of the season. And how much are we paying this guy? He signed like a $40 million contract last year. Uh, <laughs> you know, good, good move, Jerry. $40 million now, I to think sit only on like, his ass. I don't remember how much, but it's actually guaranteed. I think it's probably 16 to 20 that's guaranteed. Okay. But still, that's sixteen to twenty million. He's getting to sit on to his sit ass. on his ass and re rehabilitate his injury. Yeah, and you know you got to feel horrible for the for the rookie mm. when it's his first NFL practice. He hurts the star player of the defense. Yes, yeah. not good. And then the the Rangers uh, uh, have just just been decimated by injuries. He's, uh, Prince Fielder's out for the season. Mm -hmm. Who we just signed for seventeen million a year for the next seven years. Yep. Ouch. Uh, of course, their pitching staff has been destroyed. You Darvish had to miss a start last night. Derek Collin, their second best pitcher, isn't even has yet to pitch. Won't be pitching till late July, early August. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a club foot. Yeah, I had the dreaded high ankle sprain last year that's still not completely healed. So we've been yeah, we just started started talking about our injuries and then said, hey, you know, all sports guys are getting injured. Yeah, and it's talk about that. And it happens, you know. It happens to every team every year, but the Rangers have already had like 19 people go on the disabled list this season. That what, is what amazes me, and this, this, I don't understand it. These guys are supposed to be in, in peak physical condition. Yeah. They work out all the time. Mm -hmm. Yet, I've heard like how many guys hurt themselves sleeping? Yeah. It's like they, well, the sleeping injuries, like they slept wrong or something. It's like, how, how the hell do you do that if you're in that good a shape? Uh, I mean, they got to be booking these guys in like super expensive hotels and stuff. That doesn't make well, any sense. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the. Uh, 
just through training. Are you training correctly? Are you training properly? Are you hydrating yourself? Especially in baseball, when it's played in the summer, you've got to hydrate or you'll pull muscles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you pull a hamstring, you're out for a month. Yeah. You know, and I think that has a lot to do with it. And Plus maybe the maintenance, like once they've they've done the, the actual, you know, all the practice and stuff, if they didn't do the proper thing that they're supposed to do, like right. ice up and do right. all this other stuff, then maybe they wake right. up feeling like crap the next day or something. I don't know. And uh, you Darvish is a stiff neck. Uh, he dealt with that in the in spring training, fought through it. He's, he's having a really good year. But then he just missed another start. And he is the Rangers pitching staff at this point. That's that's about all I've got right now. Uh, but, uh, oh, Derek Collin, I was going to tell his story. He tripped over his dog <laughs> and fell down the stairs, and that's how he blew out his like, knee. Kind of like, <laughs> like how you messed up your ankle. Your high, high ankle sprain. Try to keep from killing your dog. Yeah, thank you for but, that. But uh, you're welcome. I like your dog. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so he tripped over his dog, and so that's how he got hurt yeah. and uh, blew out his knee. And it's just, you know, injuries happen to every team every year, but it just seems like the city of Dallas or the Metroplex it's it. just going through a really yeah. bad luck period. They're right getting now. kicked in the balls Absolutely. pretty hardcore right now. Absolutely, and it, it makes me wonder because I mean I know you know I work in corporate America and you work in the business and mm -hmm. when we get sick we have some sick time sure but it's a very limited amount of sick right. time right. and then if you run out of sick time you don't get paid so right. shouldn't that kind of be the same with these guys and how much we're paying them well, to do gotta, something especially if they're starting and they haven't done anything yet? You got to remember the reunion jobs. Nah. There's an NFL players union. There's a Major League Baseball players union. Mm -hmm. So their their contracts. Well, baseball contracts are guaranteed. Period. Yeah. Like if Prince Fielder never plays again, he's got seven more years of seventeen million dollars coming his way. Jeez. Unions, man. Yeah. I think unions just another way to spell assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Unions are like regulations, and that when they started out, they were a good thing. Yeah. But then they just grow and grow and grow, and then they just become nightmares. Yeah. And you know. Jerry Jones signs this guy for forty million bucks, and he's toast for the season. That's and, that, and he's, horrible. He never should have signed this guy for that kind of money anyway. Even though he is the best player on the team, he has only played in half the games that the Cowboys have played in since he was drafted. Yeah, he's missed over half the games. That's crazy. Yeah. So Jerry goes here. Let's give this guy a big contract. Yeah. Nice, Jerry. Good job. He sucks. So anyway, that's our AJ Fernandez sports. Fiverr, sponsored by Todd Vance. <laughs> Nate's like, sports Fiverr. That's what we're calling it. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck uh, up, Nate. <laughs> Are you looking up the Royal Gold? Thing? No, because you tell me what you're smoking. <laughs> Royal Gold, Gold Nerve. So we also wanted to give our shout outs because we didn't do that in this particular episode. So we do have a lot of shout outs and we wanted to talk about the cities. Yeah, we haven't done the cities in a while. We've been promising it. Okay, so uh, Twitter. Once again, I apologize in advance if I mispronounce anybody's name. Casey Hognon Crux. Cigar Deep Nate, whom you're going to meet here in a little bit. Tracy Mason. Bobby K. Colodi. Zombified Rager. And Zombie Riot. Dark Works D. Well C. So it's three film reviews things that have fallen me. Cool. Uh, a. Tassin. He's been, I thought he was following us for a long time. Yeah, A. Tassin, yeah. Uh, Ten Lighters. Jessica Cameron, CNM Cigars, Sticks and Whiskey, Widow Sun Cigar, Battleground Cigars, Skeegee Shack, and Scott Cognac. Hey, Scott Cognac's coming into town in a couple he weeks. Is. I have some new followers too that I want to go ahead and mention. Okay. King Shit, love it. <laughs> Nate had one of those this morning. Infliction. <laughs> I think we all have one. I have several a day. I have a king and a couple of princes at least. <laughs> Infliction. Infliction, Texas. Adolf Twitler. Nice. Oh my god. Shaggy, I love that person already now. <laughs> Shaggy Feets. Evan. Uh, some guy named Nate Roland. Uh, Bayou Humidors. Um, Cigar Deep Nate. He didn't give your Twitter hand. Twitter handle. Yeah, Cigar Deep Nate. I didn't get a follow from that, I guess. And I do have um, one person that continually um, retweets our stuff beyond Scott Cognac. It's that Jana. Yeah. yeah her girl. Yeah. We never say thanks to Jana. So. Because she tweets. On the retweets. Your, she yeah. retweets yours. She doesn't retweet my stuff. Oh, okay. So thanks, Jana. Thank you, Jana. Tweeting. Okay, so I'm on Facebook. We've got Narda Kazkar. TF Cigars, and of course Jeff Hirschauer, uh, YouTube, Kirk from Full Set Cigar Reviews, Eric Philp, uh, the great Gary Griffith from House of Emilio, and Chris Grubbs, and Chris Grubbs had a nice compliment on our show, even though he was arguing with you, he then did say, 
that we do a good show. So yeah, he likes the show. Thank you, Chris Grubbs. Grubbs, Grubbs. Is that it? That's it. Okay, now our top ten cities, and boy, have they changed. Scott Cognac, you're not number one anymore. Ooh, okay. falling down. Number ten is uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Number nine, New York, New York. Eight is Nashville, Tennessee. Seven is Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, I'm going to quick count. Uh, then we got Washington, D.C. Uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. At number four, Wichita, Kansas. My, how the mighty have fallen. Number four. Four. Wow. Uh, uh, Scott, you can't come visit unless you're number one. Yeah, you got to get back to number one. <laughs> we don't deal with number fours. Uh, I'm joking. Aurora, Illinois is number three. Columbus, Ohio, number two. And our new number one, and I'm shocked because it's barely even made the list before. But it was big time number one. Wow. About like 40 more downloads than number two. Wow. Is the great Phoenix, Arizona. Thanks, Phoenix. Thank you, Top Ten Cities. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. And now back to our regularly scheduled program. We're back with the Calypso Cigar Review with your hosts, Brandon Luna and Randy Rankin. Gentlemen. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we were going to tell the... Uh, Frightmare story to Brandon because he hadn't heard it. <laughs> but we'll we'll modify it because our listeners have heard it ad nauseum. You're talking about the Robert got, Patrick, yeah, it's gotten shitloads of views. Yeah. Okay, so Robert Patrick from uh, Terminator Two was he there. played the T one thousand. He was the bad guy Terminator. Oh yeah, I like big ears. Fast guy. Yeah. yeah, that guy. He was and, real thin. He was like and uh, he played Johnny Cash's dad in uh, Walk the Line. He's been yeah. in a bunch of stuff. Anyways, he comes over. He interviewed us kind of like you're doing. He grabs Brandon's microphone, jerks it out of his hand, fucks it up, <laughs> turn it off. <laughs> Yep. But we don't know this. And he interviews us. So all the only audio you get is from Nate videoing it. And it sounds so loud, but he gave us a bumper where he actually said, this is Robert Patrick, listen to Clipso Cigar Review, Stay Strong America. And it was like, fuck, we don't have that. To, yep. Because the audio was fucked up on it. But uh, that dude was cool as shit. He was way cool. And that's the thing. Is we, didn't meet any, we didn't meet anybody there that was not cool. Everybody was just like way nice. When you get in niche markets like that, I mean, yeah. you mm-hmm. got the, the guys that are into horror films. And you know what? They're not mainstream to begin with. Right. You know? Exactly. I mean, so when you get into the mainstream, you know, the, the niche market that's also part of your market, that's where a lot of love mm-hmm. affair happens. Because mm-hmm. yeah. you're like, oh, shit, I also <laughs> like horror movies. And we both smoke cigars. Yep. We're family. Well, yep. Mark Ralston was incredible. I rewatched that because I watched it the first night and I'd been drinking and I didn't pay attention to it. Yep. I've since watched it kind of sober. Mm-hmm. That dude was super friendly to you. Super nice. And he was yeah. a cigar smoker. He was in Supernatural and Alien. And we had a lot of conversation off camera that was just all about what he smokes and, then and we had an interview and everything. Was then great. we had an interview with a guy that uh, Kevin S. Tenney that only became about because Brandon was interviewing somebody else. Mm-hmm. And I just started talking to the guy. And we start talking about movies and everything. And I was like, wow, this should be recorded. So I recorded it. And once again, he turned, or I turned off the mic on this one. That was my bad. Didn't even, you couldn't even salvage the audio on that. Yeah, it was way, it was Saturday and it was way too loud in there. Is this cigar picking up in strength? Yes. Yes. I'm I'm telling you right now. I'm hitting it. I'm just hitting it. I'm like, holy shit, this thing's kicking my ass right now. This is the best Ashton ever. Yeah. I might spend 25 bucks again to buy this cigar. It, it is that good. I work for another cigar company, but now this thing's hitting right now and I'm feeling the strength just mm-hmm. getting through those those uh, And you represent a company that almost every cigar is full body. Is balls deep. Yeah. Yeah. And this cigar right now I'm I'm, I'm puffing on it and I'm like, dude. Yeah. I might talk trash to Jared because he's my hero. Andy wears seersucker suits, but this this thing is damn damn good. Okay, you know we we tease. Where does he go- find seersucker suits? You, you know, know we tease. He's got to have those custom made. Or we something. tease Gordon Yard from Rocky sales. Patel, and hopefully we can. Uh, I need to get my phone working because we got that event next week with Rocky. Why is your phone not working? No, I need to figure out how to record. Oh yeah, I need to record yeah, yeah. an interview with Rocky because you or with uh, Gordon. We tease Gordon for being the best dressed man. He is the best dressed man in the cigar. And he looks like the most sh- interesting man. In the world. His shoes are badass. Everything his shoes about cost more than I make. But you met his probably. wife? No. no. Mary is when I met her. I, I was the manager over at uh, Chamberlain's, and I'm going to tell you, man, for every bit that I love Gordon, his wife is ten times more awesome. Wow, really? and that's awesome because yeah. Gordon's wow. amazing. And yeah, by the way, an we've mentioned Chamberlain's a bunch of time. That's a very high dollar steak and prime rib place here, and mm. it's a Dallas suburb, Addison, maybe. Yeah, fifty three thirty Beltline Road. Actually, go. it's on the Dallas side of the tollway, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's actually a Dallas address, but you can smoke in there? They've got it worked out because of the zip codes. Okay. No. Don't be surprised gotcha. if... Because uh, Dallas has that stupid, stupid, if you're not a bar, 
And even if you are a bar, you probably can't smoke in it. It's but stupid. you can still smoke and have prime rib and great steak, and it's one of the last locations. Yeah, yeah. and Timberlands is amazing. It's I've been there. Good. It's awesome. Very good. I'm, I'm a Bob Steak and Chop guy myself, but if you want to take me to Chamberlain's tomorrow, let's go. <laughs> I mean, Bob's or Chamberlain's are both great. Yeah, they're, they're amazing. Great, yeah. They but, kick uh, Ruth Chris in the ass. Hard yeah, oh, absolutely. I agree. A hundred times, and I worked for all three. Yeah. Texas steakhouses are a legend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, when I go out to Phoenix or I go to Kansas City, I mean, everyone, they don't talk about Texas barbecue because we don't have a whole lot of options here in North Texas. Now, but barbecue is North Carolina, Memphis, and uh, and St. Louis, or Kansas City. That's barbecue. Salt Lake. We're good. Pretty damn good. We're good at it. But Texas is steaks. Texas is beef. Yeah. Steak. 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 Steak is Texas. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and if you're in Texas, go to Bob's or Chamberlain's. They're both amazing. Yeah. What's the other one? Good. What's one you like? Uh, make clothes, man. The one I like to close is Sullivan's. Sullivan's was badass. Oh, clothes. Sullivan's was good. I used to work at that Sullivan's yeah. on the toy. I went to a cigar yeah. band at Sullivan's. That place was badass. It was the dude. uppercut release. And for some reason, I got an invite. Matt didn't get an invite. None of our customers got an invite. For some reason, I got an invite on the e- on an email. I went, okay, let's go. It's that the uppercut release. Oh, yeah? Cool. Did it? It was an uppercut release. So I get there, and Kenny, who we never talk about Kenny. Kenny is awesome. Kenny Bourne? Yes. Man's a legend. He's been that, this that, it, since that dude is, he's Jesus the general was a carpenter. He's the general cigar rep. He's okay. a cool as shit dude. And uh, he walks over to him, and he goes, Hey, Randy. Uh, once again, I was shocked that he knew my name, but he's a good sales rep. And he's like, Hey, Randy. He's like, uh, You're going to be very disappointed. I'm like, Why? He goes, We're out of uppercut. I'm like, well, that's why we're here. He's like, I know. And he was here, and he gave me a sampler, and it was all four Macanudo regulars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't care. It was fine. I was like, <laughs> I smoked them. I'm here, people. <laughs> but, Let's get some martinis. But I wanted to martinis smoke the uppercut because that was the what they I was there for. had a green apple martini there. It was, that was freaking phenomenal. Chain. I know. I'm not a sissy guy, but mm. I know. Honest, that was the first time I had flavor. one. I you was kicked, like, this is badass. And I had it a kicked, second time somewhere else. That wasn't good. You kicked Kirk from Poolside Cigar Reviews in the nuts for drinking watermelon beer. And they were talking <laughs> about drinking apple martinis. And green apple martini. That shit was badass, though. I'm not here to talk bad about anybody. <laughs> when it comes to me, I'm here to uplift. That's right. right. David Letterman said uh, he had a bunch of his no smoking buddies. They got a hold of him. Mm-hmm. And he said that he quit smoking for a short period of time and that life became black and white. He said there was no color in my life. There was no mm-hmm. flavor in my life. And that he came back to smoking cigars just because that was where all of his enjoyment was. Yeah. yeah. When it comes to these FDA regulations, you know, Jack Nicholson's putting this thing out there right now. Saying, yeah, and God bless Jack Nicholson. He's, yeah. he's fighting he for it. He is the only one of them that's coming the forward. You got all these Where's Tom Selleck? Where's Schwarzenegger? Where's Schwarzenegger? I know, right? You know what? You got these guys that are saying, no guns, I'm going to be real quiet. You got to remember, man, they take away the rest of your rights. You got to start making a stand for everything or you're yeah. going to stand for nothing. Yeah. As uh, Ben Franklin said, we should all hang together or rest assuredly, we will hang separately. Mm-hmm. And with that, we come to the end of another Calypso Cigar Review with Brandon Luna, Randy Rankin, dot, 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 dot. And Brandon Cornelius Holsworth. And Nate Rowland. Nate Rowland. And Big Nate.